On behalf of Father Meyer, I certainly want to extend my wishes for a very blessed Easter. May this be a wonderful day for your family, for it is indeed a wonderful day for our church, especially those who came into the church last night at the Easter Vigil. Happy Easter, everyone. With the whole church, we can say the words of the psalmist, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. You know that one, don't you? When I say, This is the day the Lord has made, you say, Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day that our Lord rose victorious from the tomb. He is risen never to die again. Death has no more power over him, and death has no more power over those who believe in him. He is truly risen. This is the testimony of the apostles who saw him, who walked with him, who heard him after he rose from the dead. These very apostles who would then go forth on mission proclaiming the kingship of our Lord, crucified and risen. They would pay the price for their testimony. All the apostles but St. John would die a martyr's death. They would give their lives for the sake of truth. Who on earth would give his or her life for the sake of a fable or a fairy tale or a children's story? But for the truth, for the truth of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they shed their blood, and the blood of the martyrs continues to be the seed of the church. We know that Jesus is risen, and this resurrection of our Lord's gives us the hope of everlasting life for ourselves and for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. This day of the resurrection is a day of great hope, everlasting hope, that there is more to this life than meets the eye, that indeed our Lord has gone to prepare a place for us to be with him for all eternity in heaven if only we have the wisdom and the courage to stay close to him, to turn away from sin and anything that would distract us from following him, to abide in him, to rest in him, to make our dwelling place in him in this life so that we might be with him for all eternity. Indeed, today we say, this is the day the Lord has made. This is the day when our Lord dined with his apostles. He broke bread with his disciples. When our Lord appeared after the resurrection, one of the first things that he asked was, do you have anything to eat? He would prepare a meal for his apostles on the shore of the Sea of Galilee early one morning. He would dine with them. He would break bread with them. And he would break bread with the two disciples who made their way to Emmaus, their hearts heavy with sorrow, until a stranger walked with them and asked, What are you talking about? And they replied to his question with another question, are you the only one in Jerusalem who doesn't know what things have taken place about the one who was to be the Messiah and how our leaders handed him over to the Romans and crucified him? And now on this the third day, some women in our group went to the tomb, but they did not find the body. And they said that an angel told them that he was risen from the dead. And the stranger, our Lord, hiding his appearance, told them all of the scriptures of the Old Testament that predicted exactly what would happen, the prophecies of the prophets that foretold 
the victory of the Messiah over death and his glorious resurrection. And when they reached the place where they were going, the stranger pretended that he was going to go farther down the road, but they begged him, stay with us, Lord, for evening draws near and the day is almost spent. And he obliged, and that night at table, the stranger took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And thereupon he disappeared from their midst. And they said, were not our hearts burning within us as we walked along the road? And he explained the scriptures to us. Our Lord on that first Easter broke bread with his disciples so that they might recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And so too does he bring us together in church this morning that we might partake of the bread of life, the bread of angels, the very body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ his real and substantial presence, his risen presence. We encounter the risen Lord Jesus in the Holy Eucharist this morning, just as we encounter the Lord crucified and risen in every celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And for this great privilege of being able to receive our Savior's body and blood, we say, this is the day the Lord has made. And this is the day when we remember that our Lord, after the resurrection and before his ascension into heaven, sent his apostles forth to teach, teach everything that you have heard me say, to baptize, to perpetuate the sacraments that he himself instituted and to guide, to lead along the path of life. And this church that our Lord establishes on the rock of St. Peter with himself as the cornerstone, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. This church built upon the pillars of the apostles, this church in which you and I are living stones continues to give us the very best teaching. Our Lord himself is the fixed point by which we may align our moral compasses, something that is increasingly important in the world in which we live, a world in which relativism seems to be triumphing. What is relativism? It is when you ask someone, is this right or is this wrong? And the answer comes back, it all depends. There is no right, there is no wrong. That's relativism. In this world in which people are drowning in relativism, we need our Lord's teachings so we might align our moral compass teachings that come to us through the teaching of the church. We need the way that he provides for us through the sacraments, the very blood and water that flowed from his wounded side on Good Friday, the sacramental life of the church, the waters of baptism, the blood of the Holy Eucharist, that which nourishes us and keeps us close to him, that we might not lose the way. He is the way and the truth and the life. And through the sacraments, we stay close to him. We encounter him, the divine physician who heals our wounds in the sacrament of penance, the good shepherd who nourishes us in the Holy Eucharist, with his very body and blood, for the good shepherd is one who will die for the sake of the flock. 
We need his guidance. We need the guidance that comes to us through the church as we make our way through this troubled world in which we live. A world that is getting uglier day by day. Is there anything more ugly than what the world glories in today? The art, the drama, the books, the architecture, political discourse. There is increasing ugliness in the world today. We need a path through this so that we might not get trapped by that which is ugly, that which is false, that which is not at all from God. The Lord establishes the church and gives us the ability to find him in the midst of the body of Christ. With the ugliness of the world around us, is there anything more beautiful than people of faith rising before dawn to gather in this church to be instructed by God's holy word and to receive the body and blood of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, to enjoy the fellowship of members of the body of Christ and to go forth into our world to bring light into the darkness, to bring beauty into the ugliness, to be active in the service of the Lord by taking care of his friends, the poor and the less fortunate. We have in the church a place where we can find stability amidst the ever-shifting sands of our world. I know for some here, regular church attendance is not something that is part of your routine. But it is today, and it can be next Sunday and the Sunday after next. Try it. See if you do not find solace from the emptiness of the world out there by drawing close to the one who is the way and the truth and the life and who gives himself to us that we might have life and have it to the full. The risen Lord invites us to follow him. And for this reason we say, this is the day the Lord has made. This is a day for us to gather as families, to gather as a family of faith in our parish. This is the day for us to remember that we are united with the church throughout the world. The alleluias are ringing out around the globe as Christians proclaim the truth of the resurrection. And this is the day that we can remember that we are part of a church that is bigger than simply all of those who happen to believe in Jesus right now. But we, but we are connected through the communion of saints to the church triumphant, our ancestors in the faith who suffered greatly to preserve religious freedom for their family and their descendants. We are grateful for the witness and the example of the saints in heaven who testify by their very lives that he is risen. He is truly risen. And so we proudly say, this is the day the Lord has made.